At the beginning of round 13, Hikaru Nakamura sat on shared second place with Ding Liren, against whom he will play black in the final round. Thus, Hikaru's game with the white pieces against Polish star Jan Krzysztof Duda was a critical opportunity to score a win. Duda gave Hikaru the fight he wanted by setting aside his solid Petrov in favor of a sharp knight or Sicilian. Hikaru found a creative plan, sinking a knight into g6 and supporting it by advancing his h-pawn. And Hikaru Nakamura, he may have played the best move of the tournament with pawn to h4, Danya against Yanchis of Duda. Very interesting unorthodox decision, but the intention of that decision is crystal clear. He does not want uh, Jan Kristoff to move that knight off of g6. He is going to bring that pawn up to h5. The pawn will be supported by the queen. The pawn itself supports the knight. Duda found an impressive rejoinder, swinging his knight back to f8 and then on to h7 and g5 and finally to e4, where he won a pawn. In the post-game interviews, Hikaru revealed that he thought the position was nearly winning, and that to this point, he was playing like a brilliant computer. But the engine's evaluation was much more mixed, and things remained incredibly complex. Hmm, okay, that's fairly surprising then. So maybe, maybe I just actually um, I misevaluated everything that's going on here. Um, I, th I thought I was just playing like a brilliant computer with this knight on g6. Um. Then Duda got a chance, and he took it, striking out with b5. Had Duda followed up with the positional b4, he would have clearly had the better game. But Hikaru read Duda's mind, foreseeing that he would go for the tactical pawn to d5 and then rook to c2, which allowed Hikaru to play the incredible resource bishop to d6. I mean, I thought he would play b4, and when he didn't, I was shocked. Uh, no one's played d5. I mean, that's just a bit of a lucky break that I have bishop d6 here. And, and then as soon as I go bishop d6, it's like, wait, what's happened? And so the shift there and the fact that he's already, he wasn't low on time, but he only had like 15 minutes mentally. I think it's, it's very, very upsetting, and he just couldn't, couldn't keep it together here. The game turned just as Duda's time was low. Hikaru offered a scary exchange sacrifice that had to be accepted. When Duda declined, Hikaru seized a winning advantage with near-perfect play, including the striking king to h2. More accurate. And there it is, king h2. And it is. Oh my gosh. Hikaru. Got... King h2? He just gets out of any checks, gets off the diagonal? Oh my god. I mean, when he smells blood, it's like, it's like a lock. You know, you just don't feel... It's like a pilot in control of an airplane and there's no turbulence. It's just like smooth, you know? You can sense that he, that he feels that he's got it in the bag. And for a lot of players, that makes them nervous, right? You feel like you're winning, you start getting nervous. For Hikari, you feel like it fuels him. It makes him search even harder, even more carefully for the best conversion. And once Duda played knight d7, Hikaru, like a shark that, that smelled blood a thousand miles away, he knows this game is in the bag if he can play it accurately for the next couple of moves. By the time the final winning combination arrived, Hikaru had already put his coat back on. But look at the chair. There's no jacket on the chair, which oh, means Hikaru is wearing it. I jacket might be. Yeah, we know what that means. Hikaru puts the jacket on. The game is over. Once Hikaru's powerful passed pawn reached d7, protected by a pretty knight fork, a dejected Duda resigned. This fighting victory elevated Hikaru to clear second place. Tomorrow, Ding Liren must go all out against Hikaru with the white pieces. A win for Ding guarantees him clear second, while with a draw or a win, Hikaru holds onto that spot and the chance at a world championship match with the candidate's winner, Jan Nepomnishi, should Magnus Carlsen bow out.